And I just feel like I could bounce all morning long <laughs> to that beat. Hallelujah. Aren't you grateful for the precious blood of Jesus? Wow. The Bible teaches us there's no remission or forgiveness for sin without the shedding of blood. And there's no washing away of sin. Hey, Brother Leland, nice to see you, buddy. There's no washing away of sin without the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. We can be seated. Hallelujah. Won't you guys come down? Thank you so much. Try to be mindful uh, of our time this morning because we have communion also. Amen. So very fitting to sing about the blood of Jesus, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, wow, what a marvelous week in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So grateful for the ministry of excellence. You know, one thing Pastor Bill and Vicki taught us and taught us about the excellence, doing the best of your ability to do it excellent. Amen? Hallelujah. That to, to get, just to be mindful of, of the presence and honor it and, and be excellent in it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, I want to add, or I don't want to add, I want to kind of come in behind, I guess I, could, I should say, uh, what Brother Larry was preaching the night that he spoke. Anybody remember? You got the goods. I hadn't, hadn't got to listen to a Brother Larry preach in quite a few years. I forgot how much of the time he spends in the air as he's preaching. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> air Larry, right? <laughs> I mean, he's, he spent a lot of time in the air, and I enjoyed it. So I, I tell a testimony. I didn't know them maybe the first camp meeting over on the highway, and he was sitting in the second row, and... You know, I was sitting wherever I was, and I'll never forget, Larry jumped flat-footed over the front row and landed out in the, would be this area, but over there, sitting like where Dareth is, or standing, I'm sorry, it would be really a miracle if he was sitting, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but he was standing in a worship time or praise time or whatever, and the Holy Ghost hit, and I mean, he never reared back and run and jump he would just he took a plant and jumped and limp plumb over we had chairs about like this over there and landed out there and then you know took off running I was like that was impressive <laughs> just from a natural standpoint that was pretty impressive amen <laughs> hallelujah so he he was talking to us about you've got the goods and and the premise of what he's saying is it's he, and one of the scriptures was what Christ in us Hallelujah. Uh, I, I hear that phrase so, so many times and many times in our church because one of the mandates of Church of the Harvest was what? To teach and preach into people who they really are in Christ. When Pastor Bill and Vicki come back, it was prayer and to teach you who you are. And by teaching you who you are, it's teaching you who, what you have and, and what you can do and, and the abilities of Christ in us, hallelujah, the hope of glory. Glory to God. Christ in us this morning. And, and he's phrasing it, uh, kind of his catch theme in that was, you got the goods, you got the goods, right? You got the goods. Well, if you got Christ in you, you've got the goods, right? That's right. Praise God. So let's look at uh, one that scripture. It's in, uh, where is it at? Did I write it down? Come on, Lincoln. Colossians, Colossians 1.27, we'll look at that one real quick, I got several scriptures, I'm, like I said, we'll move along pretty quick here, because we got plans on coming back tonight, testimony time, whatever, amen, hallelujah, I'm way, way too far back, go back, there we are, Colossians 1. <clears throat> verse 27, I believe, if I wrote it down right, says, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this ministry among the Gentiles, which is, which is Christ in you. So we've quoted it, but let's look at it here. Which is Christ in us. Let's make it personal. Christ 
in us the hope of glory. So Paul is writing to us, the church. So it's okay to make this personal. From, from Paul's standpoint, looking at the church, he's saying Christ in you. For us getting it personal this morning, it's saying Christ in us the hope of glory. There will be no hope for glory in the earth without us and Christ in us. Amen? Hallelujah. And then Galatians. Uh, uh, Galatians. Turn with me to Galatians. You know the Bible says let every uh, word be established by two or three witnesses. If you was listening to Dr. Cody one night, he, he said, I got to give you another verse on that because if you got two verses that coincide with each other then you've got doctrine did you hear him say that anybody hear him say that and that's the reason he said that because the bible says let every word be established by two or three at the minimum two and three and i continue i can send you to many in christ scriptures this morning we're just going to be do two for time's sake this morning galatians uh, 2 20 says i am crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ liveth in me Amen. did you hear it Amen. let's go on and the life which I now live in the flesh I, or in the yeah in the flesh I live by the faith of the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me Christ never got in me till he gave himself for me but if we go back I'm crucified with Christ nevertheless I live not I but Christ lives in Okay, now us. Christ lives in If you're born again this morning, if you've asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, if you fulfilled Romans 10, 9 and 10, where you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth that Jesus is alive and Lord. Amen? If you have done that, then he is in you. So Larry's right. You got the goods. Brother Larry says, you got the goods, you got the goods. So it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. Now go with me to, uh, let's just put this one up there, I believe it's, I didn't write down, Psalms 8, 4. I read it this morning, so I'm just pulling it out of my memory. Psalms 8, 4. It says, what is man, or let's say mankind, okay, don't just... You understand in the old language in the Bible, many times when they're referring to man, it's mankind, so it's humans. Are we humans here this morning? If you're not a human this morning, I want to talk to you afterwards. But what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? Isn't that good? So, so go now with your, with your Bible on your lap or on your phone, your device or whatever, go with me to Hebrews. The book of Hebrews, probably my favorite book in the Bible, but I like them all, don't misunderstand me, amen, but I just, I don't know why I get to reading in Hebrews and I was like, there's depth, there's some depth here that I'm, it's only going to take the Holy Ghost to get me to understand some of this, amen. So, so in Hebrews, if we go down there to, uh, <clears throat> Sure took better notes. Uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 6. But one in a certain place testified. This is referring to what we just read in, in uh, Psalms chapter 8. But one in a certain place testified, <clears throat> excuse me, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? Remember, every word is being established by what? Two or three witnesses. So here we have Old, Old Testament uh, uh, declaration of this in Psalms chapter 8. And here the writer in Hebrews says, just verbatim, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or we say mankind, and the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou madest him, talking about man or, and Jesus, a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor and did have set him over the works of thy hands over the works of whose hands God's hands so here we've, we we see in the Bible that that 
by the Holy Spirit, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, God's wanting man to know that I'm mindful of you. I should have got a better amen than that on that one. So, so God sits where? In the heavens, on the mighty throne of heaven, with his foot on the threshold of the universes, and he looks down and he makes sure by the Holy Spirit that someone is inspired to write down that I'm sitting on the throne in the mightiest place uh, there ever will be, but I am mindful of you. And I'm going to visit. <laughs> we don't have a God that cannot be touched. Hallelujah. At one point we did. After sin came. Amen. Are you here? At one point when, when God came and walked with Adam in the cool of the day and visited with his man Adam and then sin entered in and because of sin the separation and the spiritual death took place but we know the plan was put in motion for Jesus to come and Jesus becomes the second Adam. He redeems us back, hallelujah, so that God could visit with man again. Hallelujah. On a broad spectrum. Now we know through the prophets and, 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 and different uh, scenarios in the old covenant, he did uh, speak to man, but there was not a, an intimate time with God from the time of the fall until Jesus redeemed us back. Hallelujah. I'm totally preaching a different direction, but we'll just stick with it. Is that all right? So he says that he's mindful of us and he'll visit us. This is why you see this scripture in the old and the new. He's letting you know that through Christ and Christ being in you, you have the ability to sit and visit with God. <laughs> and there are times of prayer that the world would look at and say that's religion. If they came in here, well, if they came in here on our Wednesday night prayer, they'd say that's not just religion, that's crazy. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. The Bible says when everyone speaks good of you, beware, right? <laughs> uh, so if, if, if no one ever said anything cross about my ministry or our church and the way I do things, I, I, you know, according to the Bible, I might ought to beware. Amen? So there is a time and there is a type of prayer that, that, the, that the world from the outside would look at, you know, well, when they, just when you bless your food. Anybody bless their food in a restaurant in front of people? You know, whether they're born again or not. You know, if they look over there, they, they, you know what they think? Well, those people are religious, if they're not especially. Well, those people are religious. And, and, and keep praying over your food. Don't misunderstand me. Amen. But that's a mindset of prayer. But here he said, I'm mindful of you. And I will visit with you. So there's many times of my prayer in my office or going down the road, it's just like, Lord, it's good, isn't it? Isn't it good this week? Wasn't it good this week, God? Wasn't it good, God? Wasn't it good? I said, Lord, you never cease to amaze me that I could be in church from the day I was born, and then I can sit in a service with Brother Philip Slaughter on that AM service and be in a type of service that I have never seen before in my life or, or been a part of. I've never been in a service like that. You, you, you know, I just never have. And you, I've tried to rewatch it, or I did rewatch bits and parts of it on the, on the, the YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> it left me on the internet because we've got them uploaded. And I was like, not the same. It's not the same. It was good. And if he spoke to you by the Spirit in some of those, go back. And that's one of the reasons. That's one of the reasons we do that and keep it captured so that you can go back and find your little self up there, you know, and listen to Brother Philip as by the Spirit or or Pastor Kristen was used in some of that and re you know re rehash or go back over and listen to those words. But the the presence is not the same. I don't know how to explain it, but it's not the same. And then just the, the attitude of that service I had never been in, where, where the whole place, the whole place comes for an for a, 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 a impartation to, to take the next step in finances and business and inventions and, and things that God has placed dreams. I'm not talking about you know, too much, what Pastor Cody would say, I'm not talking about dreams pertaining to too much pepperoni and 
Pepsi. I'm talking about the dreams in your heart. Like one day, you know, little kids dream in their heart. I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a fireman. I want to be a police officer, you know. And then when you get them to about uh, 25 or 30, if they're not careful because of the world, the world stole the dream right out of them. And all they can think is, I want to get by. I want to make it through this hardship. I don't know if you've been here long enough, you've understood when we sing, I don't like singing about getting barely by. And we probably should even tighten up tighter. Amen. I don't, I want to sing songs like that. I got the victory. The victory is on me. It's all over me. It's running off of me. It's getting on the carpet because wherever I stand, the victory residue is just overflowing off of me. Brother Hagen taught us there's several ways up the mountain. He said, we will always go up the mountain on the side of what? Victory. Victory. Yeah, you can talk about the hard times, and you can talk about the bad times, and you can talk about the sad times, and you can hash that all out with your, with your next door neighbor and with your family member and your spouse, and the next thing you know, you've talked yourself into being depressed. That's, right. Come on. That's a tool yeah. of the enemy. And he wants that to infiltrate the church and us focus upon bad. Yeah. Well, it's silly, Lathan, if, if, if you're dealing with hard times to talk about the victory. <laughs> well, that's not what Brother James said. We quoted it this week several times, count it all joy. Yeah. So it sounds like uh, the Apostle James is saying, maybe talk about the joy when the hard times are coming. Maybe act like you're getting in joy when the bad times are pushing on you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This is about how much you should talk about the hard times. So since either Monday when we started uh, a believers meetings or Thursday till we quit or t I guess up until this point, who's had opportunity to, to have a hard moment or a, a little strife moment or, or, or you got a call from someone that just whopped you upside the head with some sort of news. Come on, keep them up. That's about how much, yeah, see? That's about how much you should talk about it. And then you should say, but my God that supplies all my needs, but my God that causes me to be more than a conqueror, but my God that caused me to go over, over and never go under. Next thing you know, you'll be singing that song. I got the victory all over me. He made a way. And he's mindful. He's so mindful of us. What is it? I mean, I believe the writer, to some point, had such a revelation of God. He's writing down here in Hebrews. He's like, God is this. How in the world can he be mindful of us? Because we know what we've done. You know what you've done, <laughs> right? I know what I've done. I know what I've said. I know where I've been. I know the things that I've dropped the ball in, but he's still mindful of me. And he said, I'm not just mindful. Aren't you glad when people think of you, Jared? But it's a lot better when they follow through with their thoughts. Yeah. He's not just sitting up there being mindful. He went on and said, I'll visit you. And you can't visit with God. You can't be, uh, I think it was, I don't remember who it was this week. So much good. They said, you can't be in the presence of God and come out with that stuff that you had before. And what are we doing when we start quoting scriptures that I got the victory, it's all over me, I'm more than a conqueror in Christ, I'm joint heirs with Jesus, hallelujah, the blood of Jesus washed me white as snow. All those things we begin to do, what are we doing? We're trying to get out of this man, the coat, the outside flesh, and step over into the realm of the spirit with him. And when you get in, that's how you visit with him by the spirit. Those who worship the Lord must worship him in the spirit when you get over into that spirit part of you that constantly communicates with God and that's the part of you that he's going to speak to you hallelujah then all of a sudden oh there's the answer all of a sudden I can't even find depression at the moment hallelujah all of a sudden I feel better in my natural man my flesh Hallelujah. You can't get in his presence without getting. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. 
So he said he's mindful of us. Right before I, I come back here or out here, I looked up mindful in the Greek. So many people quoted this Greek stuff this week. I was like, well, I want to too, right? <laughs> that word mindful in this very passage of Scripture in Hebrews says to think of, obviously, right? To keep in remembrance. Here's a good one, though, that's tied to uh, being mindful in this verse in the Greek. Are you ready? To respond to. Yeah, I got one on the front row that maybe got it. To respond to. So when, when the Bible is teaching us that God is mindful of man and he visits him, he is saying in one, one fashion or another, yes, I'm, think, I'm thinking of you. Yes, I'm putting you in my remembrance and that's thinking of you as well. But he's also saying, I'm sitting here willing and ready to respond to you. I want to respond to you. That's why we've got scriptures like, ask anything in the name and it'll be done. Amen. The church has got it in their head that, you know, might as well turn it into a country song. Thank God for unanswered prayers, right? Probably is a country song, isn't it? I don't know country music that well, but man, it sounds like one, doesn't it? And that, that, gets, into, that gets into you in the church, the body. I'm not talking about just the building. I'm talking it gets into your life that, you know, and you turn around twice and, and your songs, the song you're singing more is thanking God for unanswered prayers. Or we make it sound like, well, God's, God knows best. Mama knows best. God knows everything. Let me say that again. Mama knows best. God knows everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't walk around with an excuse in your mouth that God knows best. Amen. So I want you to go back, now that we're in Hebrews, go back to uh, chapter 1. Let's get up there about verse 13. I just started at the back of my notes and preached in reverse. Is that okay? You wouldn't even know that if I wouldn't tell you, right? My wife's always like, quit telling them. They wouldn't have any clue. Amen. <laughs> But that's what I did. I literally started at the back. Woo! Verse 13 in chapter 1 <clears throat> says, But to which of the angels said he at any time sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies a footstool? This, this, this wraps up real nice with Ephesians when it says in Ephesians, the Ephesians prayers, that he caused Christ to come up and be seated where? Come on, where? In heavenly places. He caused Christ to have a seating place next to the Father at the right hand, it says, in heavenly places. And then it, it really brings it all together when you get in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. What's it say over there? Caused us. He caused us. Say, caused me. He caused me to come up and be seated with him, in him, in heavenly places. Come on now. He, he caused me, he gave me a place in him next to the Father, the one that's mindful, wants to respond, wants to visit, and here he's letting you know, at it, what time did I ever ask an angel to sit at my right hand? Now the scripture tells us not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought. So this tells me you'd have to get way out there to think more highly of yourself. I'm talking about in, in, in biblical terms, in, in the spirit. You'd have to get pretty crazy to think more highly of yourself than you ought. In the spirit. Who you are as the body of Christ. Rightly discerning the body. This is part of it. Remember the scripture. We're getting ready to partake. Uh, referring to communion. says, for many are sick. And many sleep, or we could put it in southern Illinois terms, are dead because they've not rightly divided the Lord's body. Well, what are you? Well, you're part of the body. You're part of the body. 
And if you don't think of yourself as seated together with him in heavenly places, if you don't think of yourself as Christ, Christ, the one that hung on the cross, the one that did the miracles, the one that carried the precious blood to the mercy seat, if you don't think of yourself in him, then you are, there's a form of you wrongly discerning the body. Haven't heard that one much, have we? How come I'm sick? Find out where you're wrongly discerning the body. Find out where you've let your mouth talk about woe is me and we're just little bitty humans down here. Find all that stuff out and root that out with the word and begin to think of yourself seated together with him in heavenly places. And he's letting you know here, I've never even asked an angel to have this seating place. Are you with me? But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand. What he's saying here, I've not asked him to have that place, but I have made that place ready and available for you to have a seat. Keith Moore sang the song. What was it? Come down. It was like the enemy saying, come down. Come down from that high tower. Come down from that seating place. Get down here and let's rough it up together in this place. Because he knows if you'll stay in your seating place, he stands not a chance. That's right. Woo! I'm looking for that Larry anointing. I want to fly. Come on, I want to I wanna jump things. Amen. <laughs> and what's it go on and say? It says, sit on my right hand. I've not asked him to do that. He said, at, at which time have I, have I ever said unto the angels, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies a footstool? So he's telling you, if you'll sit down, if you'll have your rightful seat in your rightful place, all of a sudden when you look down, the enemy is your footstool. He said, I didn't ask the angels to sit down and make their enemies their footstool. He said, I've asked you the, the, the precious fruit of the earth, the, the body of Christ, the, the sons and the daughters of God to have a seat next to me in Christ. And when you sit down, just have a look because you're going to see what your footstool is. It's the enemy and all his kingdom. Hallelujah. Verse 14 says, are they, talking about the angels now, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for Interesting word, for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Are you an heir? Well, we've already quoted, I'm a joint, man. I'm a joint heir with Jesus. Was you here with Pastor Earl taught us about that? We're not co-heirs, we're joint heirs. He showed us the difference between co-heirs and joint heirs. If me and Leland are co-heirs, I'm just reverbing what, what Pastor Earl taught us, if me and Leland are co-heirs in an inheritance, that could mean that I got three million and he got the old truck that the tree's growing up through, yeah. setting out in the fence row. We're co-heirs in that, though. But joint heirs says, I got a million, he got a million, I, everything I got, he got. Yeah. He broke that down for us. We're joint heirs with him. Hallelujah. And here he's telling you, that those angels, that he didn't give them the seating place that you've got. Remember, you're going to have to think pretty highly to get out of whack. Most of us thinking way below. How many times did Brother Larry say, your, your thinking is stinking. <laughs> stinking thinking. He said, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for the heirs of salvation? Well, I'm an heir. I don't know if you've got that revelation this morning, but just say it if you ain't got it anyway. I'm an heir. Say, I'm an heir. Say, I'm an heir. Say, I'm a joint heir with Jesus. I'm seated in him in heavenly places. Oh, woo, that's powerful. And then here he's telling you, I'm mindful of you. I want to visit with you. And I gave you a workforce. Man, this hadn't been preached much across the board. He said, are they not all? The ones that I didn't invite, they ain't got time to sit down. They got jobs. <laughs> he said, are they not all ministering spirits? We're talking about good, angelic, heavenly angels. We're not talking about the one-third that got cast down. We're talking about the ones that stayed the course and stayed with God and didn't rebel. 
He said, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for, for the heirs of salvation? The church adopts a, 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 a different mindset. I need minister too. And you may. You may. And I, we want to minister to you. And we want the angels to minister to you. Praise the Lord. But when you change your mindset that they're here with me to minister for me. They're here with me to help me carry out the task in the earth. Here's the thing with angels. They can do things I can't do. <laughs> you do just a little bit of a study, and I don't want this church to get weird. We're not going to get weird. It's like I taught with the men. We, we studied angels for a little bit, and I said the first person shows up with an angel medallion and a crystal, and, and they're, they got three names of their angels, and they visit five times a day. I said it's going to be shut off right now because we're not going to get weird because human beings got a, a funny way of getting weird when we start talking about angels. Ain't nothing weird about it. Right here it says they're sent to help you. We've got more scripture for that. Psalms 91 says what? It says he'll give his angels charge over you. We could say it this way. He'll, he'll put his angels in motion to help and watch over you. Amen. So we're not going to get weird. We're not going to start talking to them. We're not going to start asking for them to appear. We're not going to ask them to sit on the corner of the bed and tell us all about this. Rev no, if they appear, whoo, ha, ha, praise the Lord. Yeah. But you don't get the mindset of trying to make them appear, right. naming them and all that stuff. And they have names. They've even revealed their names. The Bible itself reveals Michael and Gabriel and the different ones reveals their names. Amen. Well, I'm preaching at you not to, get a, not to be a weirdy, okay? But I do want you to understand that you've got help. And what did I say? They can do things I can't do. What happened in the lion's den? So the angel come down and wrapped his hands around a lion's mouth. Last time I checked, I don't even want to try to do that. There's a good chance I can't. You know, if I had to, I'd try. I hope I got duct tape in my pocket, bailing wire, and a 357 Magnum would be my choice. You know? <laughs> but understand, this is supernatural. It says the lions were hungry and starved. They kept them lions in a state of hunger, so then when something showed up in there that had meat on the bone, it was gone, right? So they throw Daniel in the lion's den, and that angel or angels comes down and holds the mouth of the lions. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't roll the stone away. I'm talking about the physical stone that may have weighed anywhere from 10 to 20 tons. I can't walk up to that. I mean, they told me in high school I was stronger than spoiled meat. I couldn't decide if I was strong or they were smelling my clothes. I don't know. <laughs> On the football field, you know, we had a custom. You just don't wash your practice pants all season. By the time you put them on for the last practice, they were funky, weren't they? Ain't they funky? Like you stood them in your, in your locker. They were white, but they were black. <laughs> it's a Michael Jackson song. But I can't roll that stone away. But apparently the angel come down, rolls the stone over, and then jumps up and sets on it. Or maybe he hadn't jumped. Maybe he just propped back on it because he was such a big angel. So they can do things I can't do. But get this. You can do things that they can't do. Are you with me? There are things they will not do. There are things they will not do. One of them is just like God. They won't supersede your will. Amen. So you've got to get in cooperation. How do I get in cooperation with my angels? Get in cooperation with the word. Don't start talking to your angels. Don't start praying to the angels. You get in the word, and then all of a sudden you'll find yourself cooperating. Amen. This week in service time, we cooperated with some. I know. First time in my life that I prayed was at the morning Angela had, and we prayed for a while, and I walked and prayed, and I began to understand that I was in cooperation with the angels for a moment. I've never had that my whole minute. How long have you been born again? Since I was 1997. I've never had that inkling or knowing in my spirit that I was cooperating with them. But this time I was like, I have an understanding. I have an understanding in my spirit in this prayer time right here that I'm cooperating. 
Amen? Hallelujah. And why is that? Well, I've been sitting in the Word for a long time. I've been sitting under the Word for a long time, and you keep doing the Word. You do what the Apostle James said, be ye a doer, a doer, a doer of the Word, and not just a hearer only, and you will cooperate. Hallelujah. So they do things you can't do, and you do things that they can't do. They were not entrusted with the ministry of reconciliation. You have biblical precedence for that. Remember when the angel appears to Philip and says, go this way. Am I the only one here? Have you ever read that? He said, go, was it, did he tell him to go south down that road? I can't remember verbatim. I'm just going to paraphrase for time's sake. And, and, and down that road was what? An Ethiopian. And he's sitting there reading the word, the word of that day, the book of uh, Isaiah, I believe it was, maybe. I could be wrong. Is that right? Reading the book of Isaiah. And he don't understand it. He don't understand it. He don't have the Holy Ghost in him to understand and help him and bring revelation of the word of God. So here comes Philip because he's listened to the message that the angel brought. He didn't ask the angel to come and bring him a message. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refer back to not doing the wrong a lot when you start talking about these subjects. He didn't ask. It just appeared. If an angel wants to appear, you let him. Praise the Lord and listen. But then still test him by the word. Amen. Because if he talks out of line with that, the Bible says there's one that will appear. He won't be an angel of light, but he'll appear like one. This is why you don't start asking and start praying to him. No. If they do, test them, make sure it lines up with the word. Hallelujah. We're excited about it. But I'm telling you, in, in, in my life, I've come to the place, I don't have to see them. I don't have to hear them. I've got the word on the matter. I've got the word on the matter that they're ministering for me. Yeah, they'll minister to us too. Come on. But here it says minister for you, help you. Help you in your walk. Help you in your ministry. Help you in, in the ministry. He's like, well, I'm not a minister. Yeah, you've been entrusted, I already said it, with the ministry of reconciliation. You've been entrusted with the gospel to tell people about Jesus. Hallelujah. They won't do that. They may give you some direction like they did here, Philip. So he goes south, runs into Ethiopian. There's, he goes and ties himself to that person, or it means he goes and bees with him. He explains some things to him. Praise the Lord. And the Ethiopian gets what? born again and baptized in water now how come the angel he knew he was down there pretty sure he knew he was down there that's why he told Philip to go south right pretty sure the, the angel had a knowing that there's an Ethiopian sitting down there reading the Bible but he's not understanding it so let's send somebody full of the spirit Do you know Philip was one of those that says he was full of the spirit come on the ones that are full of the spirit will get things done Hallelujah. They'll understand the book of Isaiah. So he goes down through there. He's at his chariot. He says, you know, long story short, says he believes in his heart. He said, well, here's water. What would keep me from being baptized? And Philip says, well, if you believe in your heart, hallelujah, you'd be baptized. And he says, I believe. So he confessed. He fulfilled Romans 10, 9 and 10. Philip dips him in water, poof, and disappears, doesn't he? We have to think pretty high before we start thinking too highly. Amen. Philip was moved instantaneously from one place to another. That's crazy. Thank you. I think so too. But I would love to be moved from one place to another for the gospel's sake. Amen. So, going on. We know that uh, <clears throat> chapter 1 and chapter 2 were not separated when the writer wrote them. So if you go to chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Now, so if he's talking to us about the ministry of angels before this, and then he comes right into chapter 2 here, and he says we should take heed to some things because we'll let them slip. We'll let them slip. I would venture to tell you 
anything, all the things of the Spirit, the ministry of angels, the, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the prosperity message that people just hate, and, and the healing message that people just refuse to believe, all those things, if they're not gone over, if they're not rehearsed in the Word, then they will begin to slip. And all you got left is a social group, a gathering of people. And you got good hearts, and you got good minds, people wanting to do good things, but because, because the ministry of the gospel has slipped away, we're just coming together. Just coming together. He says, so don't let them slip. Verse 2 says, For the word of God spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which is which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto, uh, uh, unto us by them that heard him. God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse, diverse miracles and the gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will for, un, for unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the word to come whereof we speak. This is ours. This is our job, church. Amen. And here he's telling you about gifts of the Holy Ghost and diverse miracles, signs and wonders. He's telling you that these things will slip if you don't stay with it. They'll slip away. Hallelujah. Some of us have probably lived there. Then you get to verse 6 again that we've already read, but... Uh, one in a certain place testified saying what is man what is man that thou art mindful of him or the son of man that thou visitest him thou hast made him a little lower than the angels thou hast crowned him with glory and honor and did have set him over the words of thy hand thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet for in that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. Come on. He's, he's give us an, uh, given us a place. If you go back, it said he made, he made man. What is man that I'm mindful of? He made him a little lower than the angels. And there's all kinds of uproar about that. There's one group because that word angel there is Elohim which every other place that it's translated is God, referring to God. And, and history says that the King James writers struggled with that so much because that Elohim also means angel or, or head angel, and so they, they struggle with that and they translated it, not necessarily wrongly because they put angels, which there is a meaning of that in Elohim, but they just couldn't put in there that he made man a little lower than himself. Now, I'm not here to build you up and tell you to start preaching that, but this thing, one, we know for sure, he made, he, if we did become a little lower than just the band of angels, it was, only, it was only in the form of that we will have to die. Am I getting too deep for you? It's only in the form, because it goes on here in a little bit and says he made Jesus also a little lower than the angels. Well, that don't make much sense, does it? Surely the Son of God is not lower than the band of angels that created ones. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The only form that Jesus became lower in than the band of angels was that he had to die. Because he took on flesh. And if, if Jesus don't rapture us out of here, guess what? We all got to go that way. But he said, I took the sting out of it took the power out of it I firmly believe that one day you should be like here I come Jesus and go over and be with him the church is never meant to die uh, awful horrible tough death mm -mm. Mm -mm. there's very few very few men and women of God that have got this revelation and walked in it but I'm working my best to get it amen I can talk about it and I can tell you some stories about it. I'm not telling you I've got it, but I'm working towards it. Amen. Amen. Brother Philip and, and, and Angela that walked close with, with Brother Hangin telling us the stories about how he had talked about one day I'm going to eat strawberries and just go to heaven. 
And the person that fixed his breakfast that for this next morning, that night before, he said, tomorrow I want strawberries with my breakfast. And he got up and ate his strawberries and bowed his head and went to heaven. My, my, my. Smith Wigglesworth died walking, talking to a pastor. Charles Capp said, I want all my family here at noon on Wednesday. And he's like, why? He's like, I'm going home. Noon on Wednesday. And, you know, his daughter was like, doggone it, Dad's been so sharp all these years. And all of a sudden, you know, in our little turkey pea brains, we just miss it. Charles Capps began to see and knew he had picked his time. He said he had his whole family over, said hello, and then said goodbye and went to heaven. <laughs> what do you think it means when the word says he took the sting took the sting out of death. It says it's the last enemy to be put underfoot. So it's still there. But he said, since it's still there, and this is the way it goes, I'll just show up, take the sting out of it. Hallelujah. Let's be a church that gets this. Because if you get that revelation, now listen to me, if you get that revelation, that means you're going to walk in health all the way, if this speaker's the last moment, I'm going to walk in health till I get to the final day. I'm not saying you're going to be a 20-year-old slam dunk in a basketball. I'm not saying that when you're 80. But you can walk in divine health because why I took the sting out of death? You tell me I'm never going to have... No, I'm not telling you you're not going to have opportunity. You're going to have opportunity to be sick. You're going to have opportunity for joints to seize up and hurt. You're going to have all that opportunity. All but the blood and the word can reverse it. Hallelujah. Amen. I think I'll stop there. Come to the piano for me, Kristen. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So I wanted you to see those two scriptures, that Christ is in you. Larry, Brother Larry preached it so good that you've got the goods, and he shared a bunch of scriptures about Christ in you. So Christ is in you, and he's mindful of you. God is mindful of you, and he's given you a workforce to help along the way. A workforce that is, has long been forgotten and slipped. Remember it says there in, in, in chapter 2, he says, take heed of this, lest they slip away. Take heed of all this, lest this slips away. Amen. We're never going to get weird. I promise you, I promise you, as your pastor stand here, when I hear something weird, it'll be me and you talking. Okay? It'll be me saying, that's weird. And then we'll sit down and be like, let's open the word because I don't want to nullify an experience because I've never heard of it. See, I'm going to use wisdom. I don't want to nullify one of your experiences that you very well may have or could have because I don't know about it. But I'm going to say this, let's sit down and match it to the Word because the Holy Ghost always works in line with the Word. One more Brother Hagen story. He told it before he passed. He said, for years... When, when, when the healing revival was uh, ramped up and it was, you know, he told stories like you just get anybody healed in, in the late 40s and through the 50s. It's just like the, that movement was on. He said, many times when I prayed for people in a healing line, he said, I would look at my hands and he said they would literally be oily and almost dripping with oil. He said, and I didn't put oil on them. And he said, the first time that ever manifested in his hands, he said, I was like almost looking at people to look and see if they were looking at it. And he said it was obvious that no one else was, was evident, so it was to him. But he made a, a renowning statement that he said, I never told anybody about that for years. Never rehearsed it. You know, I'm thinking if, if, I, if I'm praying for people and all of a sudden my hands supernaturally get oil with like with anointing oil on them, I'm probably getting Brent and Jared afterwards. I'm like, look, I'm going to tell you what I experienced. 
But listen to the wisdom. He said, because he, he experienced that, but he said, I can't find that anywhere in the Word. Are you with me? So before he announced it to everybody, he looked in the Word. There are some things that can be supernatural that, 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 that we have a hard time explaining, but those are not things that we set up and preach doctrine on. Those are not things that we come to a service and try to make happen. Hallelujah. If the Holy Ghost moves that way, praise the Lord. We'll just stay with the word and go on to tomorrow. Amen. So use wisdom as, because as, I believe, I believe in the, the, the last move revival. I believe in the gifts of the spirit in manifestation uh, to its, their full potential. Amen. I believe uh, the, 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 Brother Wigglesworth prophesied it and said that after the, the Word of Faith movement that he was talking about, he said, I see people studying and writing notes, and it was the Word of Faith movement. I mean, it's, it's, it just when it broke out, all of a sudden people are sitting writing what the preacher's saying. He said, I see the people writing down. That was an uncommon thing. That was an uncommon thing before the, the late 60s. People came to church and they just listened. And all of a sudden, I see people writing. In 1947, Brother Smith prophesied that. And he said, after that move, there's going to be a move of the gifts of the Spirit that the earth has never known. And I was praying about it one day, and I said, how come they're ordered like that, God? How come there's this, the charismatic removal, how the great awakening, all that stuff? He said, the word of faith, the teaching revival had to take place because it's got people grounded in the word so that when the gifts of the Spirit begin to manifest to the full potential power that they have, those word of faith people that are full of the word will be able to keep the semi in the middle of the road. Hallelujah. Hmm. <laughs> Stand up with me. God is mindful of you. Remember one of the Greek uh, definitions of that is that he responds. He's thinking of us. He's remembering us. He's mindful of us, but he responds to us. And then he visits with us. He caused us to have the ability to have Christ within us. And once Christ is within you, he gave you the ability to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Wasn't it glorious? Wasn't it glorious when Brother Larry's ministering and, and, and the little one runs up and gives his heart to Jesus? And then he's like, well, you can be filled with the Spirit too. And, and a whole group come up. I'm telling you, I don't know how to explain it all the time. And I told him this, when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost and began to pray for myself in other tongues, the Word of God became alive more to me. It opened up to me. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that we're, we have Christ in us, and he is the hope of glory. We thank you that right here in the flesh, we can live by the faith of the Son of God, Christ in us, the Son of God. We thank you, Lord, that we have ministering spirits that were sent forth to minister for the heirs of salvation, to help us along the way, God. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, that we get this revelation of this word this morning, that we're not walking alone, just like the prophet had to look to his helper and say, open his eyes, God, let him look around and see the host that's with us. For there's more, there's more, there's more with us that is with than there is that's with them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We'll sing us something real quick before we take communion.